Ozark Highlands Radio is brought to you by the Ozark Folk Center State Park in Mountain View, Arkansas. A wonderful way to enjoy yesterday. On the web at ozarkfolkcenter.com. And by Stone Bank, a community bank supporting entrepreneurs and farmers nationwide with loans guaranteed by the USDA, SBA, and Farm Services Agency. Learn more at stonebank.com. And the Arkansas Arts Council, empowering the arts for the benefit of all Arkansans. On the web at arkansasarts.org. Howdy, folks. This is Dave Smith, host of Ozark Highlands Radio. Welcome to our show. Christmas is a special time to people here in the Ozarks. So this week, I'm going to do the whole show down in the vault with my buddy Mark Jones, reminiscing about Christmas's past and listening to music of the holidays played and sung by some of the best musicians in the Ozarks. So join Mark and I for a special Christmas program this week on Ozark Highlands Radio. Well, sure enough, it's Christmas time once again here in the Ozark Mountains. After a beautiful, mild fall that lingered through the month in November, our December weather has turned chilly and crisp, and we might even get to see a dusting of snow before Christmas Eve. The last time I saw Mark Jones, who manages the vault where we keep the recordings of all our past shows here at the Ozark Folk Center, I asked him to dig around through the stacks and pull out some of the best music from live Christmas shows that we've done here over the years. It's time to head down to the vault to see what he's found for us. Here we go. Hey, Mark, it's good to see you down here. Well, hello, Dave. I'm glad to see you. You look like you're doing okay. Yeah, Dave, I've had a few days off here in December, and I'm afraid it's going to get cold. It though. generally does this time of the year. Mark, is this a fireplace over here? Yeah. Well, I didn't know you had that down here. Well, I've had a lot of stuff uh, covering it up, and you probably didn't even see it. Well, by golly, let's just sit down here in front of the fire and talk about some of this music you got for Let's us. Let's do it. So what do you what'd you find for me as far as old Christmas music from the past? Starting this off, I'd like to uh, let you listen to a thing that's very near and dear to me. It's uh, Dad and Mom and my sister and I doing uh, Christmas Times are Coming. I've heard you guys do that before. That's a great song. And that would be you and your dad, Grandpa Jones, and Ramona Jones, your mom, and your sister, Elisa, right? Elisa, yes. Well, let's listen to it. All right.
Oh, Mark, what a great song. It's so nice to hear your family singing again. It brings back great memories. It does, doesn't it? We did it quite a bit here at the Folk Center, and uh, I always enjoyed it when we got a chance. Yeah, to me do. too. What else have you got for us as far as Christmas music goes? Well, one of my favorite guitar players comes down here quite a bit, Randall Hilton. I remember Randall. Oh, nice fellow. Wore a great big top hat and played guitar. That's right, and he knew how to play that guitar, didn't he? Oh, he sure did. I guess he's still around somewhere, I suppose. I think so, over on the East Coast. We need to get him back here. We do. So what's he doing for us today? It's called Mary's Christmas. Really? One I've not heard before. Let's listen to that. Okay. Randall Hilton's a good singer as well as a picker, isn't he? He sure is. Boy, it's nice by the fire here. This is swell. I had never thought you'd have a fire down here. It's pretty nice. It's, it gets pretty warm here pretty <laughs> yeah, quick. I, I see that. Dave, would you like something to drink? Well, I, I'd love a little drink. What do you got? I've got some eggnog. Well, I love eggnog. I'd love to have some. Try some of this. Boy, whew. it's got a little bite to it there. Mark, how, how come? Well, it, it's it, distilled water. Aha, uh -huh, that Ozark distilled water, I guess, That's huh? That's right. Uh -huh. Some of it came from this still, and some of it came from that still. <laughs> and... <laughs> you got any more good Christmas music for us? I sure do. The Dowden sisters, do you remember them? I do remember three lovely gals from up in uh, southern Missouri. They used to come down here quite a bit. Laura, Hannah, 
and Emily Dowden. Emily was quite some banjo player. That's right. She still is, I believe. She, I think she's still up here in Missouri somewhere playing the banjo. This song is named Ring the Bells. All right. Ring-o, ring-o, ring the bells. Ring-o, ring the bells. The merry bells, merry bells of Christmas time. Bells of Christmas time. Toll, 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 toll the theme. Toll, toll the theme. So full of love, love and grace. And grace of love and grace sublime. Deep, so deep within our hearts. Deep within our hearts. The swelling tone. Ever swelling tone. So richly dwells. Now so richly dwells. Till, yes, till they throb with joy. Till they throb with joy. Then ring the bells. Then ring the bells. Oh, ring the bells. Oh, ring the bells. Ring. Oh, ring. Oh, ring the bells. The bells. The merry bells. Of Christmas time, of Christmas time. Yes, flood, flood, oh, flood, flood the earth, flood, oh, flood the earth, or land and sea, with silvery with chimes, with their silvery chimes. Sweet, so sweet. oh, sweet the song, sweet, oh, sweet the song. Of, holy song love. of holy love, their music tells, love, their music tells. tolling, tolling us a strain, from realms above, from realms above. oh, Christmas bells, bells. Oh, Christmas bells. Ring, oh, oh, ring the bells, ring, oh, ring the, bells. the merry bells, the merry bells of, Christmas bells of Christmas time. Sad, oh, sad, oh, sad the heart, oh, sad the heart that never, hears. never, never hears. Their soothing chime. never hears the chime. Let, oh, let the tones be let fraught, the tones be fraught, with gladsome with the gladsome news of him who dwells, him who dwells in that land, that land so fair. In that land so fair. Then ring the bells, ring the bells, oh, ring the bells, oh, ring the bells. Oh, ring the bells, the merry bells of Christmas time. Yes, flood, oh, flood the earth, or land and sea, with silvery chimes. Sweet, oh, sweet the song of holy love, their music love, their music tells. Tolling, only not so strange. From realms above, oh, Christmas bells, by Christmas bells. Ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the bells, ring the Christmas bells. What a treat to get to hear the Dowden sisters. They haven't played here as a, as a group, the three sisters, in quite a few years now. It's been a while, but they sure are good. They are. You know, Dave, I run across a um, recording of my buddy, Glenn Orland. Ah, good old Glenn Orland. Passed away just a few years ago. Well-known cowboy singer and storyteller. I really enjoy just getting to spend time with Glenn. Glenn was the real deal, too. Worked for many years as a rodeo cowboy, as a working cowboy. Ran cattle and horses up here on Dodd Mountain. What a guy. He recorded this on stage one time. He would recite a lot of poetry and stories. And it's so good to hear him telling this story about an experience he had with Christmas. All right, let's hear it. They said I could tell about a Christmas program I went to out here south of town about 20 years ago. It was real cold winter and the roads was so bad and everything it was before they got number nine paved and before they had any place like this here. Now I was out there on Dodd Mountain feeding a bunch of old poor cows and nothing much was going on around town. And then I got to listening on the phone during the day and the, to the, the line and uh, just because nothing else to do and I didn't have a television set then either. And I heard that there was going to be a guy talking on a Christmas program down in Richwoods, West Richwoods. And they said he, over the phone, he was the best talker there ever was. So the night that he was supposed to be there, the roads were so bad, and I couldn't hardly start my old truck, and the tires was slick, and I figured I'd slide off the road, so I rode horseback down there. And I knew how to get there from my place without really going on the road, just going by trails. So I didn't see that there wasn't any traffic on the road at all. And I got there to West Richwoods and nobody was there. So I went on in and I built a fire in the stove and got it all warm in there for the people who were starting to come in. And nobody showed up, but finally the preacher showed up. And we introduced each other to ourselves. And I said, I hear you're a really a good preacher. They've been bragging about you for weeks. And he says, well, it looks like you're the only one here. So we waited a little bit, and nobody else showed up. It was just so bad. And I says, well, you can preach to me. And he says, well, there's no use starting since you're the only one here. 
And I said, say, listen, now, I rode down here a horseback through real cold weather and bad conditions to just to hear you. I'll be real disappointed if you don't. So finally he agreed. And I kind of thought I'd just hear kind of a Christmas story, you know, but oh boy, he preached me a, a real genuine hellfire and brimstone sermon, and it just went on and on and on. He must have talked for an hour and a half. When he finally got done, he came down off of the front and walked up to me, and he said, well, how did you like it? I said, well, it was really nice. It sure was. You sure are a good preacher, and you're a real good talker. But let me tell you something. When I go out there in the pasture with a load of feed and only one old cow shows up, I don't dump the whole load out there to her. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy, Mark, it's nice to hear Glenn tell one of his stories, huh? Oh, uh, he was quite a storyteller. He was quite the storyteller. He knew a million great old stories and jokes. He and I used to trade jokes backstage all the time. Hey, uh, uh, you know, I was thinking about Christmas's past here at the Folk Center, and I was thinking about three guys uh, who were usually a big part of the Christmas show, and that is the Lonesome Cowboys. You got anything by those guys? The Lonesome Cowboys. Let me look around here. Yeah, I hear something that we found. It's pretty interesting, too. It's called Five Foot Two Santa. <laughs> <laughs> and this is uh, Tom Cleveland, Moon Mullins, and James Joel. Ah, uh, yeah, sure enough, the Lonesome, Lonesome Cowboys. Lonesome Cowboys. Oh, boy, what are they doing? Singing this song, Five Foot Two Santa. <laughs> All right. Sounds like the Cowboys, all right. That would be Moon playing that good guitar, huh? He was quite the picker. Moon and... Uh, and uh, Tom Cleveland. Yeah. Moon and Tom have uh, passed on now, and I'm not sure about James Joel. I believe he's over in Mississippi somewhere. Hey, uh, you know, I believe I'd like another shot of that uh, eggnog, if you eggnog? don't mind. Eggnog? Why, yeah. While you're getting that together, let's take a little break, and, and we'll be back in about a minute, okay? Okay. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio.
Welcome back to Ozark Highlands Radio. Merry Christmas, Dave. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I see you kind of got it decorated down here. This oh, is pretty nice. Yeah. What's these yeah. little what, What's these little stockings here? The little ones. Yeah. Are, well, that's that's for my mice. <laughs> That's mighty nice of you to have Christmas for your mice down here, because I know you probably got plenty of them. Oh, I do. <laughs> hey, Mark, uh, I remember that your dad, Grandpa Jones, had a great poem that he used to recite called The Christmas Guest. Do you have a recording of that? I do. He did it quite a few times here at the Folk Center, and uh, it was a poem in the original, and it was given to Dad in a little bitty children's type book, and the last couple of pages was missing out of the book. Oh, no. But uh, Dad was so inspired by it that he uh, wrote the last, very last couple of pages of that poem and, and did it on Monument Records as a recitation. Really? And uh, But then... He did it out on the road, too. Well, I would love to hear it. Okay, here it is. Ramona, not too long ago, found a, oh, a few years ago, found a little poem in a little book, and uh, we thought it was one of the nicest uh, Christmas poems we've heard, and we wrote the last part of it, finished it up. I'd like to read it to you, if you don't mind. It's called The Christmas Guest. <laughs> happened one day near December's end. Two neighbors called on an old-time friend and they found his shop so meager and mean, made gay with a thousand boughs of green. And Conrad was sitting with a face of shine when he suddenly stopped as he stitched the twine and he said, old friends, at dawn today, when the cock was a crow in the night away, the Lord appeared in a dream to me. And he said, I am coming your guest to be. So I've been busy with feet of stirs through in my shop with branches of fir, the table spread, and the kittle is shining over the rafters, the holly is twined, and now I'll wait for my Lord to appear and listen closely so I will hear his step as he nears my humble place and I open the door and look on his face. So his friends went home and left Conrad alone for this was the happiest day he had known. For long since his family had passed away And Conrad had spent many a sad Christmas day But he knew with the Lord as his Christmas guest This Christmas would be the dearest and best So he listened with only joy in his heart And every sound he would rise with a start And look for the Lord to be at his door Like the vision he had a few hours before so he ran to the window after hearing a sound, but all he could see on the snow-covered ground was a shabby beggar whose shoes were torn and all of his clothes were ragged and worn. But Conrad was touched, and he went to the door and he said, Your feet must be frozen and sore. I've got some shoes in my shop for you and a coat that'll keep you warmer, too. So with grateful heart, the man went away, but Conrad noticed the time of day and he wondered what made the dear Lord so late and how much longer he'd have to wait. When he heard a knock and he ran to the door, but it was only a stranger once more, a bent old lady with a shawl of black with a bundle of kindling piled on her back. She asked for only a place to rest, but that was reserved for Conrad's great guest. But her voice seemed to plead, don't send me away, let me rest a little while on Christmas Day. So Conrad brewed her a steaming cup and told her to sit at the table and sup. But after she left, he was filled with dismay, for he saw that the hours were slipping away. And the Lord had not come as he said he would, and Conrad felt sure he had misunderstood. When out of the stillness he heard a cry, Please help me and tell me where am I? So again he opened his friendly door and stood disappointed as twice before. It was only a child who had wandered away and was lost from her family on Christmas Day. Again Conrad's heart was heavy and sad. 
But he knew that he could make the little girl glad, so he called her in and wiped her tears and quieted all her childish fears. Then he led her back to her home once more. But as he entered his own darkened door, he knew that the Lord was not coming today, for the hours of Christmas had passed away. So he went to his room and he knelt down to pray, and he said, Lord, why did you delay? What kept you from coming to call on me? For I wanted so much your face to see. When soft in the stillness a voice he heard, Lift up your head, for I kept my word. Three times my shadow crossed your floor, And three times I came to your lowly door. For I was the beggar with bruised cold feet. I was the woman you gave something to eat. And I was the child on the homeless street. Three times I knocked, three times I came in. And each time I found the warmth of a friend. Of all the gifts, love is the best. I was honored to be your Christmas guest. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, that's very nice. It's great to hear your dad again. He sure had a great voice and a great way of speaking, didn't he? He did. He really, that's, I mean, if you listen to the words of the poem all the way through, that's uh, his feelings. I could tell. Echoing their joy of strength, I recognize that sound. That's the old musical saw that Ed Wilcox used to play, isn't it? It sure is. Boy. Boy. <laughs> I, I can listen to some of that, but I couldn't listen to a lot of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can get too much of that real quick, I'd say. Yeah, kind of like the banjo, huh? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> what else have you got for us by way of Christmas music, Mark? Uh, Dave, we have Joni Bishop. Uh, Joni, I remember Joni. She's been here a number of times. In fact, I think last year she was here for our caroling in the caverns that we do here in Stone County. I think so. Yeah, she's a fine songwriter and a good musician and a, a visual artist as well. She's a pretty talented gal. She sure is. What have you got for us? It's Silent Night. Well, there's a classic Christmas tune if there ever was one. Merry well, that was nice. It was nice hearing her voice. Boy, this, you know, I don't think you better give me any more of this uh, eggnog. I think I've had my limit. Uh, yeah, it, it'll sneak up on you. Uh, you know, there's another gentleman that's been around here for quite a few years, and he has a very nice voice. It's a trained voice, and uh, he does some great Christmas music. Wait, let me guess. That's got to be Bob Oliveira. That's true. Well. Bob Oliveira doing Birthday of the King. Let's listen. Twas the little village of Bethlehem There came to us a child one day and the sky was bright with a holy light on the place where Jesus lay. Alleluia, oh how the angels sang, alleluia, how it rang and the sky was bright with a holy light was the birthday of a king Was a humble birthplace, but oh, how much 
God gave to us that day. From the manger bed, what a path was led, what a perfect holy way. Alleluia, oh, how the angels sang, Alleluia, how it rang, and the sky was bright with a holy light, was a birthday of a Sure enough, that's Bob, all right. What a voice that guy's got. Hey, do you like quartet singing? Oh, you know me. I'm in a band called Harmony. I love harmony singing. Oh, that's right. You can't beat it when you get a good quartet going. That's true. And for those of you that don't know, quartet means four people. And uh, this is the Heritage Quartet that would play here quite often at the Ozark Folk Center. And uh, I'd like for you to hear this. Yeah, I remember them. Uh, uh, Jerry Byler was the head of that group, played the piano, sang. And I'm not sure who the rest of them were now after all these years. What do they got for us? Dave, it's a song called I'm Going Home for Christmas in My Heart. Okay. Well, that was the Heritage Quartet singing Going Home for Christmas in My Heart. Pretty nice song, wasn't it? It was. You know, I think we'll take a break for about a minute or so. And when we come back after the break, I've got a great guest host segment by our friends Elwood Donnelly and Aubrey Atwater. You're listening to Ozark Highlands Radio.
Jean Ritchie was the youngest of 14 in a family they called the Singing Family of the Cumberlands. And they got some nice recognition. Jean went to New York City uh, as a young woman. She was college educated. And she met and married a filmmaker and a photographer named George Pickow. And they, they had a beautiful life together. They were married for 60 years. And he filmed them the Ritchie family in 1955, approximately. It was called uh, Kentucky Christmas. It was on some kind of network television show, and you can actually access a video of that online. It's a fascinating thing to see. And they give little snippets of some of the things the Ritchies were doing in their house in eastern Kentucky, their modest cabin. And um, at one point, they start singing the song Brightest and Best, and that is a beautiful hymn that is associated with Christmas, but I think if you asked Jean what her favorite song was, she would say brightest and best. Many of us have memories of our first Christmas tree, if, if, if you had one in your home, and Jean Ritchie is no exception. Here's uh, her recollection of the first Christmas tree that entered their house in eastern Kentucky. I reckon the new Christmas and the ideas of presents and the tree Mom read about in a paper or book of some kind. She used to keep the post office over on Clear Creek, and she got to read all the papers that came through for folks. Anyway, the stories of how Christmas was celebrated off from here got to Mom, and she decided one year to make a Christmas tree for us. Dad and the others, Uncle Wash and Uncle Isaac and them, they thought it was all foolery and wouldn't be much of help about it. But on the day before Christmas, Mom called me to come, her eyes just a shining and said secret-like, put on your coat. I want you to help me do something. I got my coat and ran out with her. I could tell by her way that it was something nice. What is it now, Ma? Where are we going? She kept smiling, quick, little excited smiles, and she said, I want us to go hunt up a Christmas tree. Gee, oh, I could have tucked wings and flew, as they say. I was so tickled. We got us a hatchet and lit out in the worst snowstorm you just about ever saw. We had to fight our way through the deep snow already on the ground, across the branch and up the steep bank to the road. The nearest evergreens were pretty far up in the hill. It was hard going, slick ice in under the soft snow, and to cap it all off, it began to snow even harder, the wind slapping it right into our faces. We couldn't see a hand before us, and the wind was blowing so hard we couldn't stand. Mom grabbed my hand. Have to go back, she hollered above the storm noise. Well, I began to cry. I knew if we went back, it'd be too bad to come out again after this storm, and Christmas would pass, and no tree. Come on, I said. She sounded mad. Then she said, I see us a tree we can get to. Don't have to be a pine now, does it? Down by the branch across from our house were growing some little sycamore saplings and Mom took the hatchet and cut down one of them. It didn't have any leaves, but the little woolly winter tags were hanging right pretty all through the limbs of it. We took that tree home and propped it up in the front room, and that night after supper we decorated it. Let's see. We cut colored paper out of old catalogs and tied them here and there with bright wool threads. And we strung popcorn and hung it around. And the next morning when we got up, there were big apples, saved for winter in the cellar hole, hanging from the branches. Under the tree was a big plate of molasses candy Mom had made. As I look back on it now, it was a kind of queer Christmas tree. But to us all then, it was the prettiest thing we'd ever laid eyes on. We just couldn't get away from it. I remember the whole house was full of the good smell of the wine saps. That was the happiest Christmas. That glorious 
touch their hearts of gold. Peace on the earth, good will to men from heaven's all gracious King. The world in solemn stillness lay to hear the angels sing. Still through the cloven skies they come with peaceful wings unfurled, and still their heavenly music floats o'er Mark, I recognize uh, that song, and I recognize the sound of where it was made. I think that was Caroling in the Caverns, wasn't it? I think so. It was out at uh, Blanchard Caverns. That's right. That's really a neat thing we've been doing here in Stone County now for, oh gosh, I've probably 10 years now at Blanchard Springs Caverns, which is a beautiful commercial cave owned by the National Park Service. A bunch of our musicians go down there and actually sing way down in the caverns for audiences. It's a really neat thing, and I don't know about that being done anywhere else, as far as I know. I don't think so. Well, that was nice to hear. What, what else have you got in your list of stuff? Well, you know... Dave, there's one particular tune that I've heard you do around Christmas, and this is uh, its one of my favorites that you do. And I know how it is to listen to yourself, but if you'll <laughs> just bear with me, I sure would like to hear you do it again. What is it? Well, Christmas in the Trenches. Oh, uh, this is a great song. This was written by John McCutcheon, a fine contemporary songwriter who lives, I believe, in Virginia or maybe North Carolina, and he wrote this song specifically about an event that happened in 1914, the first year of the First World War, and it was a true event that happened. Uh, they call it the Christmas Truce of 1914, and uh, this is uh, about my favorite Christmas song. Well, you can tell. You sure do it well. Well, thank you. <laughs> Francis Tolliver, I come from Liverpool, and years ago the war was waiting for me after school. To Belgium and to Flanders, to Germany to here, I fought for king and country I love dear. T'was Christmas in the trenches, with the frost so bitter on. The frozen fields of France were still no Christmas songs were sung. Our families back in England were toasting us that day. They're brave and glorious lads so far away. I was lying with my messmate on the cold and rocky ground when across the lines of battle came a most peculiar sound. Says I, now listen up, me boys, each soldier strained to hear As one young German voice rang out so clear He's singing bloody well, you know, my partner said to me Soon one by one each German voice joined in in harmony The cannons rested silent, the gas cloud rolled no more as Christmas brought us respite from the war. And after they had finished and a reverent pause was spent, God rest ye merry gentlemen, struck up some lads from Kent. The next they sang, wish dearly not, tis silent night, says I. And in two tongues one song filled up that sky. There's someone coming towards us, the front line sentry cried. All sights were fixed on one lone figure trudging from their side. His truce flag like a Christmas star shone on that plain so bright as he bravely strode unarmed into the night. 
Then one by one on either side, walking into no man's land. With neither gun nor bayonet, we met there hand to hand. We shared some secret brandy, we wished each other well. And in a flare-lit soccer game, we gave them hell. We traded chocolates, cigarettes, and photographs of home. These sons and fathers far away from families of their own. Young Sanders played his squeeze box, they had a violin. This curious and unlikely band of men. Daylight stole upon us, and France was France once more. With sad farewells, we each began to settle back to war. But a question haunted every heart that lived that wondrous night. Whose family have I fixed between my sides? T'was Christmas in the trenches, with the frost so bitter on. The frozen fields of France were warmed as songs of peace were sung. And the walls they kept between us to exact the work of war had been crumbled and were gone forevermore. My name is Francis Tolliver. In Liverpool I dwell. Each Christmas come since World War I, I've learned its lessons well. That the ones who call the shots won't be among the dead and lame. And on both ends of the rifle, we're the same. Thank you. Oh, Dave, that, that's a pretty tune. That's a powerful song, isn't it? It sure yeah. is. You yep. did it well. That's not sir. your basic Christmas carol, is it? No. <laughs> I love that song. I sing it every Christmas, sometimes maybe just at home for my wife, but it's, it's my favorite Christmas song of all, really. Yeah, I like it. Well, uh, um, what else, what are we going to finish our show with today? You know, we try to do this, and we've kind of rearranged the 12 days of Christmas. Uh -huh. It's kind of interesting. You get a kick out of it. This is the staff band, the group that works here at the Folk Center and plays with so many different people and sings with so many different people. It's called the 12 Days of Ozark Christmas. <laughs> Let's hear it. It's been a tradition here at the Ozark Folk Center for many years to end our Christmas programs with this song, a variation on the 12 Days of Christmas by D. Strickland Johnson called The 12 Days of an Ozark Christmas. Deb? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a possum in a gum tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Two hickory nuts and a possum in a gum tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three fat quails, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me four razorbacks, three fat quails, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the sixth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me six pounds of bacon. Five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven coons of play and six pounds of bait, five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. 
On the eighth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eight banjos, drum, and seven strings of play, and six pounds of bay, and five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the ninth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me Nine fiddlers fiddling, eight banjos strumming, seven coons are playing, six hounds are baying, five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the tenth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me ten acres growing, nine fiddlers fiddling, eight banjos strumming, seven coons are playing, six hounds are baying, five spinning Four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me eleven catfish swimming, ten acres growing, nine fiddlers fiddling, eight branches strumming, seven coons are playing, six pounds of bane, five spinning wheels. Four razorbacks, three fat quails, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. On the twelfth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me twelve stills of brewing, eleven catfish swimming, ten acorns growing, nine fiddlers fiddling, eight banjos strumming, seven coons are playing, six hounds are baying, five spinning wheels, four razorbacks, three fat quail, two hickory nuts, and a possum in a gum tree. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our show today featuring music from past Christmases here at the Ozark Folk Center. Mark, you've done a great job today of uh, picking out some great music for us. It's been really fun. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, and I hope you and all our listeners have a great holiday season. And Mark, go easy on that eggnog, okay? Okay. You can find out more about us and listen to past shows at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com or leave us a message at our Facebook page. For Ozark Highlands Radio, this is Dave Smith. See you next week, and Merry Merry Christmas. Christmas. Ozark Highlands Radio is produced by Jeff Glover. Executive producer is Darren Dorton. Additional support for this program comes from the Committee of 100, proudly supporting the Ozark Folk Center State Park since 1974. Arkansas State Parks, with 52 unique reasons to visit the natural state. On the web at ArkansasStateParks.com. And by Stone Bank, with deep roots in Mountain View and a deep respect for those who preserve our heritage. More information about what it means to bank Boulder is at StoneBank.com. For information on upcoming shows and events, we are on the web at OzarkHighlandsRadio.com. Until next time, I'm Donna Farrar.